So let's continue our study of group homomorphisms. Last video we defined group homomorphisms and looked at various examples of uh, group homomorphisms. I am going to study further now. I am going to start with some basic properties of group homomorphisms. So properties of group homomorphisms. Okay, so some of the most important properties are the following. So um, maybe I will write this as a definition, no, proposition rather, proposition. Let V from G to G prime be a group homomorphism. It sends, in other words, phi of a b equals phi of a times phi of b for all a b in G. Then we have two statements. Phi of e g is e g prime. So uh, just to clarify here, e always stands, remember, for our identity element in a group. But here I have two groups, g and g prime. So I'm going to be denoting which identity I am talking about by looking at the subscript e sub g is the identity element of g e sub g prime is the identity element of g prime so what I am saying is that in a group homomorphism the identity element of the first group and goes to the identity element of the second group further we have if a belongs to g if a is an arbitrary element of g then phi of a inverse that means I first take the inverse of a and apply phi to it I get the same answer as first taking image of a and taking the inverse image ok so uh, just read this carefully I first take inverse image sorry I first take the inverse then take phi or I first take the image and then take the inverse image I get the same answer so inverse and then phi is same as first phi and then the inverse so this is the these are the properties of group homomorphisms so let's prove this this is very easy the condition that phi of a b equals phi of a times phi of b guarantees this that is a powerful condition that guarantees this note that e g times e g is e g right this is in g this operation is taking place this is an equation in g that is because anything commutes with eg so in particular anything when you multiply by eg you get it back so in particular eg times eg is eg so apply phi to both sides okay now because phi is a group homomorphism phi of eg times phi of eg is phi of eg times phi of eg phi of eg times eg is equal to phi of eg i am not changing the right hand side here phi of eg is same as uh, i am uh, keeping it as phi of eg but the left hand side becomes this because of the group homomorphism property okay now let's look at this this is in g prime this is an equation in g prime we started with an equation in g applied phi to it and translated it completely to g prime so now what does this mean? You have uh, two elements. So you have an element actually in G prime that you want to multiply, you get it back. So we are trying to show that phi of eg is eg prime. But whatever it is, I can multiply by both sides by both sides of this by the inverse of phi of eg what do I get this is an element of the group g prime so you have two elements multiplying to this element they all happen to be the same element but you can multiply by this element inverse of this so phi of eg inverse times phi of eg times phi of eg is phi of eg inverse times phi of eg Right? So that is what we have. 
when you multiply out you get this but then what is uh, what is this because again the group is associative we can combine these two and that will cancel because that's inverse of this so we get phi of eg on the left hand side and what is phi of eg inverse times phi of eg this is an element inverse times itself so this is nothing but eg prime this is the property of inverse in a group phi of eg is some element i'm multiplying by its inverse so this is some element in g prime i'm multiplying by its inverse i get eg prime so this proves the first property that i said so the identity element of the group g maps to the identity element of the group g prime right second property is similar and easy so let's say that uh, we have uh, we have already shown that so we know that a times so let a be in uh, g then uh, a times a inverse is eg right this is the definition of inverse so apply phi to both sides so phi of a times a inverse is phi of eg by part 1 this is already shown to be eg prime phi of eg is eg prime now the group homomorphism property says that phi of a times phi of a inverse is eg prime so phi of a times phi of a inverse is eg prime but remember inverse is the unique element which has the property that phi of a times it is eg prime so by definition of inverse we must have phi of a inverse is phi of a inverse the whole inverse because phi of a when you multiply with this element here you get the identity element so this element must be the inverse of phi of a which is denoted by phi of a whole inverse so this is remember the second property phi of a inverse is phi of a whole inverse so this proves two so the proof is complete in other words identity must go to identity under a group homomorphism inverses must go to inverses this is useful to keep in mind because it tells you quickly if a map is a group homomorphism or not if it doesn't send uh, identity element to identity element it cannot be a group homomorphism so if you recall one of the examples that i, I did in the previous video was sending a, uh, a function from z to 1 comma minus 1 phi of a is let's say 1 if a is odd um minus 1 if a is even and i i asked you to check that this is not a group homomorphism that was left as an exercise for you now let's uh, do this exercise using the proposition that we proved today remember the other way if you send even numbers to one odd numbers to minus one that was a group homomorphism but if i interchange this it's not a group homomorphism in fact what is the identity element of uh, z this is my notation right e is always the identity element and i'm denoting the group by the subscript remember z is a group under addition so the identity element is zero right and zero is even so under this map phi of 0 is because even numbers go to minus 1 phi of 0 is minus 1 but what is uh, if you call this group g prime what is e g prime certainly 1 because this is a group under multiplication with 1 as identity so the zero element does not map to the identity element so phi of e g e z rather is not equal to e g prime so phi is not a
So C is not a group home also. We don't need to check anything more. You simply send, you simply check that the identity element does not go to the identity element. It cannot be a group home office. Okay, so similarly inverses go to inverses. So uh, however, I want to make a point here. If the identity element goes to the identity element does not mean that it's a group homomorphism. The proposition does not say that if this condition is satisfied, if EG goes to EG prime, it is a group homomorphism. It only says that if you have a group homomorphism, identity element goes to identity element. So neither of these are sufficient conditions for homomorphism. They're only necessary conditions. They must be true. But if they are true, it does not mean that it's a group homomorphism. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, let me define some important subgroups associated to important subgroups associated to a group homomorphism. Okay, so there are two. So let me work now with an arbitrary group homomorphism. Let's say phi from G to G prime is a group homomorphism. So we define two subsets first and we will check that they are group homomorphisms. Uh, sorry, we will define two subsets first and check that they are subgroups. So kernel of phi okay this is the word kernel of phi and it is denoted simply by ker phi is the following so you define ker phi to be all elements of the group such that phi of a is the identity element of g prime so this is all elements of the group such that phi of a is eg prime. Exactly the subset of elements which map to eg prime. So and similarly, so let me define this first. Image of phi. So this is a subset of g remember kernel is a subset of g image phi which I'll denote by image phi is the following image phi is equal to simply the image of the function phi so it, this is just a set theoretic notion I'm taking all elements of g prime this is inside g prime clearly this is all elements of g prime which appear as the images of elements of g under phi. So the proposition now is kernel phi is a subgroup of G. It is a subset of G by definition but in fact it is a subgroup of G and image phi is a subgroup of G prime. This is true for any group homomorphism So if you start with any group homomorphism phi, kernel is a subgroup of G, image is a subgroup of G prime. What is the proof? It is again fairly straightforward. Let me check one. What is a subgroup? If you recall from a previous video, subgroup is a subset of the group which is closed under multiplication, which has inverses and which has the identity element. Okay. So first of all, is it closed under kernel phi is closed under the binary operation of G. So let us check this kernel phi is closed under the binary operation of sorry G not G prime of G because if A and B are in kernel phi 
this means phi of a and phi of b are both e g prime by definition kernel phi consists of elements which map to the identity of g prime but then what is phi a b this is by definition sorry not by definition by the property of a group homomorphism is same as phi of a times phi of b which is e g prime times e g prime which is e g prime so that means a b is in right because a b maps to e g prime so a b is in the kernel phi so we started with two elements in the kernel and concluded that their product is in the kernel kernel phi contains e g this is a uh, very easy right because what is phi of e g this is by the previous proposition this is e g prime so that means e g is in kernel phi finally kernel phi is closed under inverses the third property that we require for a group subgroup is it closed under inverses yes because if a belongs to kernel phi that means phi of a is eg prime by definition it is eg prime by the previous proposition phi of a inverse okay yeah phi of a inverse is phi of a inverse by the previous proposition right and this oh sorry so let me write it like this phi of a inverse which by the previous proposition is phi of a inverse which is e g prime inverse which is e g prime right phi of a inverse is by the previous proposition inverse of phi of a phi of a is e g prime so it is e g prime inverse inverse of identity is itself okay so that means a inverse is in kernel phi so we have checked three properties kernel phi is closed under binary operation of g it contains identity element it contains inverses so kernel phi is a subgroup of g now let's check that image is a subgroup of g i am going to show that image is a subgroup of g similarly exactly as before image phi is closed under binary operation g prime right now we are claiming that image phi is a subgroup of g prime so it must be closed under binary operation of g prime what are two elements of image phi if you recall image phi is phi of a a in g for all elements a of g we take phi of a so two elements of image phi would be phi of a times phi of b let's say they are both in image phi but that means phi of a times phi of b by the property of group homomorphism is same as phi of ab but this is by definition in image phi because this is the image of ab product of phi of a and phi of b is the image of ab so if you start with two things in image phi the product is in image phi image phi contains e g prime it must contain e g prime in order to be a subgroup but it does because phi of e g by the previous proposition is e g prime so e g prime is in the image recall again that image is the image of the function e g prime is the image of an element so it it is contained in the image it is a set theoretic image image phi is closed under inverses this is also easy let's say phi of a belongs to image phi let's say phi of a belongs to image phi then what is phi of a whole inverse by the previous proposition this is same as phi of a inverse right phi of a whole inverse is phi of a inverse but phi of a inverse again is by definition an element of the image because uh, it is image of a inverse so image free is a subgroup okay so 
this proves the proposition. So we have shown that kernel and image are subgroups of G and G prime. So this is an important. These are two important subgroups attached to any group, any group homomorphism. So it's a good exercise now for you to work out the kernel and images in, the, in all the previous examples that we discussed of group homomorphisms. I won't uh, discuss in all, all the examples, but uh, if you consider the map from Z to Z, phi of A being N A, so we have fixed uh, N. This is the first example of a group homomorphism that we studied. You fix an integer n and send an integer a to n times a. The kernel of phi is all integers such that n a is 0 because 0 is the identity element of z. But this is precisely 0. So the kernel is z just 0. Remember kernel being a subgroup of uh, the group contains the zero element always. So in this case, it is exactly the zero element. So this is in a subgroup of the first z. What is image of z? Phi. This is all n a, where a is in z. And this is precisely the group n z that we discussed, subgroup of z obtained by multiples of n. So this is a subgroup. And uh, if you take uh, the determinant homomorphism from G L N R to R star, what is the kernel of this? So remember phi of A is determinant of A. Kernel of A is the set of matrices in G L N R such that P of A which is the determinant of A is 1. So this is a subgroup by the previous proposition. This is called the it is called special linear group denoted S L N R. Okay. GLNR is called the general linear group special linear group is the group of invertible elements with determinant 1 that is the kernel what is the image of phi image of phi is the set of real numbers which are obtained as determinant of A for an invertible matrix. So image consists of all determinants as you vary the invertible matrix in GLNR. What is this? It is certainly a subgroup of by the previous proposition it is a subgroup of the multiplicative group of non-zero real numbers. But I claim in fact that it is all of non-zero real numbers. Why? I claim that image of uh, the determinant map is all of non-zero real numbers. In other words, given a non-zero real number R, let us say, there exists an invertible real n by n matrix k such that determinant of a is r. Not that if I show this then I have justified saying that image of phi is r star because if there is such a matrix it is in GLNR. So a is in GLNR that is to say it is an invertible real n by n matrix and its determinant is R. So R would be in the image. So if I want to show image of phi is R star, I need to verify this. But what is such a matrix? I simply can take I will take a diagonal matrix 
I will put 1 r in the first left hand side position and I will take 1 is everywhere. I will take 1 everywhere else on the diagonal, zeros of the diagonal. This is certainly an invertible matrix because its determinant is r and r is non-zero. It is an invertible matrix, it is size n by n, it has real entries. Okay. So, this matrix will have determinant because determinant of a diagonal matrix is the product of uh, diagonal entries, determinant of A is R. Okay, so, the image of uh, the determinant homomorphism is uh, all real number, non-zero real numbers of course, we want non-zero real numbers. Just one more example I want to do. Um, this is also something we discussed in the previous video. If you take uh, G is an arbitrary group, fix an element of G and consider group homomorphism from the integers to the group by sending n to a power n. Okay. This is uh, a group homomorphism was something we checked earlier. What is the kernel of phi? This is all integers such that phi of a in this case a power n is identity of g. Okay. This is a subgroup of z. Okay. This is a subgroup of z. So, this is all integers such that a power n is identity is a subgroup of z. What is the image of phi? This is a power n. So, remember this is phi power n as n varies over integers, right? This is by definition image of phi. But what is phi power n? This is just a power n as n varies over integers. In other words, this is just a minus 3, a minus 2, a minus 1, a 0, which is e g a a squared. If you recall and if you remember now from a previous video, we gave a name for this group. This is simply the subgroup generated by A. This is the subgroup generated by A. Image of E is the subgroup generated by A. Let us look at kernel slightly more carefully. So, now what is kernel of the same example. So, in this example what is kernel of phi? So, kernel of phi as I wrote earlier is all integers such that a power n equals e g. And if you recall again from a previous video, we have already classified all the subgroups of the integers. What are they? Recall, we earlier classified, so remember this is a subgroup of z. We already classified all subgroups of, what are they? They are of the form they are of the form um, they are multiples of a fixed integer. So I have already used n and a here. So I am going to use uh, b z right they are of the form b z b z being all multiples of a fixed b. So, b z is b n where n varies over. So, they are of the form b z where b z is this. So, every subgroup of integers is like this. So, in particular kernel also is like this. So, in our example kernel phi being a subgroup of z is of the form kernel phi is b z for some integer 
in fact b is a non negative integer see um, if you go back and see the video where we classified subgroups of z they are of the form bz for a non negative b we can always if okay so i don't want to repeat the proof but we first rule out the case that it is a zero subgroup in which case it is of the form zero times z otherwise there are some numbers in it non zero numbers hence there must be some positive number in it and we take the smallest positive number and show that all elements of the subgroup are multiples of it so b is either zero or positive so now this b is actually something that you are familiar with b as an exercise note that b is nothing but the order of it recall that from before what is order of a so we have two possibilities so so what is order of a we first look at we look at k, uh, multiples of a so we look at e a k squared a cubed we keep looking at this either it never either it, you will never hit e again the identity element or you will hit e somewhere so it is the first place where you hit e if you hit e so it order of a has two possibilities it's uh, so it's is either okay so maybe i should write it like this if a power n is e for some positive integer n then the order of a is this smallest positive integer m such that a power m is e so this is such that okay so s dot t always stands for such that so if a power n is identity for some positive integer n i am going to simply look at this least positive integer which has that property if a power n is not equal to e for any positive integer n then i will simply define order of a to to be infinity and now i claim that looking at the map the group homomorphism which sends integer n to in a power n in a group g we noted the kernel is of the form bz it is all multiples of b so kernel of remember phi is all integers n such that a power n is identity and we we saw that it is bz for some integer which is non negative so it's either zero in which case kernel phi is zero right in kernel phi is the zero set and in this case a power n cannot be equal to a for any positive integer so order of a is infinity so actually i should not say this so this is quite, uh, this is not right right b is nothing but the order of a is not quite true b is related i should write b is related to the order of a if uh, b is zero then order of a is infinity if b is not zero so b is positive then kernel of phi is bz and now order of a is actually b sorry so 
in this case order of a is b because uh, remember kernel is this is bz and b is positive so the smallest positive integer such that a power n is e is b so order of a is b so if the kernel of this map is uh, kernel of this map is 0 if kernel of this map is 0 then order of a is infinity and kernel of this map is non zero then order is equal to the generator of the group so b is related to the order of it okay so these are uh, some of the properties of group homomorphisms and uh, i'm going to stop here in this video and in the next video i'm going to talk about, so in this video we have looked at uh, basic properties of group homomorphisms namely that they send identity element to the identity element inverses to inverses we looked at uh, two very important groups associated to a group homomorphisms uh, group homomorphism namely the kernel and the image and we worked out what these are in some of the examples of group homomorphisms that we looked at in the next video i will continue my study of group homomorphisms and define isomorphisms of groups thank you